I'm studying archaeology at Bournemouth University and I'm here to talk to you today about a geophysical survey I did at Buckland Rings. Um, so a bit of background, um, I did a 40 week placement at the New Forest um, Sorry, um, from October 2016 to June 2017 and it actually feels like it was years ago now but it was quite recently I finished and my placement was in three parts. Uh, so the first part I was with James Brown and I was working with volunteer groups and community heritage groups and mostly this was organising trips and training and getting equipment um, repaired. Um, but my absolute highlight was um, organising a trip to the National Archives, which some of you probably went on, um, and organising a behind the scenes tour for that. It was a really brilliant day. I had a great time. So uh, The second part was with Lawrence Shaw, um, and it was organising and carrying out LIDAR surveys. Um, and that picture is actually from um, a video Bournemouth University made about my placement. And they did quite a few, but Ours got the most views, I think, because my placement was the coolest, so it was quite popular. <laughs> and the final part was the geophysical survey of Buckland Rings. Um, so that brought together all the skills, really, that I'd learned sorry, on my placement. And the first, part, first thing I did was a desk space assessment of the site. So I looked through the past archaeological work undertaken at Buckland Rings, looked through old maps, looked at the LIDAR data, just generally tried to find out as much as I could about the site. And it was all really interesting, actually, and I really enjoyed that part. Um, so what I found out was that um, CFC Hawks did excavations in 1934, um, and he did four trenches, and that included uh, sections across the defences, and he found an interned entrance, which wasn't actually visible on the ground anymore due to like um, cultivation and ploughing. <coughs> and there was also large post holes at the entrance, which meant that um, Buckland Rings was probably um, gated. There were also Neolithic and Bronze Age finds, uh, but overall the site was dated. Oh, sorry, that keeps making me. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, there was Neolithic and Bronze Age finds which meant that, um, oh, but it was still dated to the pre-Roman Iron Age. Um, the West Hampshire Ward Company conducted a small excavation for a pipeline in 1985, and they mostly found medieval pottery and bits of tile. And then the New Forest National Park Authority um, observed preliminary trenches for an electric cable in 2016, and they found 146 sherds of medieval pottery which was all domestic in character. Um, so just to give you a general overview, um, so the red is the CFC Hawks trenches, the four um, boxes. The blue is the West Hampshire Water Company pipelines. And the yellow is the New Forest Observed um, Trench. <laughs> so you can see, like, obviously excavation is great, but it didn't actually cover that much ground, so it's quite hard to get a general overview of what was going on. Um, but there was also geophysical survey conducted in 1993 um, by the Historic Buildings Monuments Commission for England. And it was conducted to help inform the future management strategy of the site. Um, but unfortunately, there was no conclusive results. Um, this is the magnetometry survey. And you can see, oh, I think I have a little light. Yeah. Um, you can see the Hawks excavations came out quite well, and the ramparts as well. Um, but other than that, there wasn't any evidence of roundhouses or anything like that, which you'd hope to see. They also did MagSus, but again, it was all sort of um, non-conclusive results. So once I'd got all the permissions and everything I needed and sorted out dates, it was on to our survey, which was on Wednesday the 26th of April to Thursday the 4th of May. And I know some of you in the crowd helped out, so it's nice to see you here. Um, yep, yeah, and we had help from volunteers and from Bournemouth University students. And this is the ground we covered. Um, so we did mainly inside um, the ramparts, but we also did some bits outside at Little Buckland and in some uh, nice people's garden as well. Um, so you can see we had the Hawks trenches as well come up in ours and the defences. Um, and oh, if just to give you a bit of reference, normally I think you'd walk in around here 
and this is where the sort of in, the new interpretation boards are. Um, just to give you a view of where you are, and just to give you context of how much we covered. Um, the orange box, which I forgot to put in the key, sorry, is where the 1993 geophysical survey went. So you can see we covered a bit more to the east, which is good because that turned out to be some of the best bits. So I'm glad we included that. And just for comparison, so that's the 1993 and our one in 2017. So it's quite nice. We have the consistency of the defences and the Hawks trenches in both. But yeah, ours extended eastwards a bit more. So yeah, the first most obvious thing is the Hawks excavations. Um, yeah, just caused by the soil disturbance, really. And I was a bit, a bit miffed at first because I thought we were going to see loads of roundhouses or something like that. Um, and I don't know how obvious it is to you, but there are some potential roundhouses in the yellow circles. Um, but yeah, they're all quite faint. Um, but um, the site was ploughed quite extensively. And as we were doing the survey, a gentleman who was walking around nearby, he lived locally, he was like, oh yeah, I ploughed these fields. So they were done still quite recently. So that's probably why things didn't turn up as well. Um, but I spoke to my lecturer and um, he said potentially there could be post hole buildings, which wouldn't show up as well, especially if the site was extensively ploughed. So he told me an example at Hod Hill, so this was geophysics conducted on the left by Dave Stewart in 2007 at Hod Hill, which is another Iron Age hill fort. Um, so they had a, I don't know how it, it's clear to you, but like there, they've got loads of roundhouses, but also these uh, four poster buildings. Um, so to give you a view of what it would look like excavated, this is from Wangford, um, example excavated by Suffolk Archaeology. Um, so this is on gravel, so that's what our site would look like too. And um, so these four posters could be occupation, or they could be for grain storage, because um, they're sort of interpreted as being um, high off the ground. Um, but at this site, um, at Wangford, they were also had uh, one roundhouse, also with ten potential four poster structures nearby. So more four posters than roundhouses. And theirs was dated to the mid Iron Age, 400 to 100 BC. And yeah, so they're normally four posts are interpreted as uh, grain storage or granaries. And I went to the Iron Age Museum at Andover recently, which is brilliant. So if you get a chance, definitely go. Um, but this is sort of what they thought they might look like, just to give you an idea. So as you can see, they're sort of high off the ground, so maybe rodents couldn't get into the grain storage. Uh, next, we have the medieval field systems. So these came out really, really nicely. I'm guessing it maybe wasn't ploughed as much, but I'm not entirely sure, but that seems to be the case. Um, and these were unknown previously, which is really cool. Um, and it fits with the previous findings of pottery and medieval tile um, found by the New Forest and the West Hampshire Water Company. Uh, just for comparison, uh, field systems near Snettish in Snettisham in Norfolk, and there's our one on the right as well. So as you can see, nice linear features. Um, also, within the field systems, there was these pits. Um, I thought maybe they were areas of burning, and I thought this one here, I thought maybe it was a pyre, but if it was, it would have burning, and it would probably be a big splodge more like the ones you see like this. Um, from the soil. But um, yeah, it looks like a multi phase occupation. Um, but then, oh, sorry, this is an example from Danebury, an Iron Age hill fort again. Um, but this example's on chalk, so ours wouldn't be as visible as this. It'd be more um, like the gravel. Um, but yeah, they're again interpreted as uh, grain storage. Um, so I was thinking, why would they have four posters? and pits for grain storage. And I asked a few of my lecturers about it, and they said it might be different storage for different parts of the processing, which makes sense, I guess. But I think it's still quite open to interpretation, maybe what the four posters are. So if anybody has any ideas, let me know. Because I'm not 100% convinced, but yeah. Have to excavate and see, I guess. But um, so 
important side note, this was done by Ashley at Bournemouth University. Um, and this is, uh, she clipped it slightly differently to read it and used CAD. This is all the interpretations together on one map, which I think looks quite cool. Um, and also, Ashley included this bit in her interpretation. And I didn't, but that's just because I didn't know what it was. And I, but I think it is probably good to include it. Um, so yeah, again, if anybody has any, any ideas what it might be. Um, and so for the next steps, um, I completed a report on the work we did and gave it to Historic England, so now they have that. Um, the site looks like it's multi-phase, obviously, with the Neolithic and medieval pottery finds and stuff like that, and obviously it's Iron Age, so it'd be really good to find out more about what's going on there. And um, an excavation is hoped and a research strategy is being prepared at the moment.